Preaching and bringing the message of God to people is not easy. We always encounter mixed reaction from people. There are those who will appreciate our homilies and explanation of the Word of God. Others are critical and unappreciative. This was not just our experience. This was, this was not just experience of priests, bishops, evangelizers, and missionaries, but this was also the experience of the apostles. And even Christ himself has experienced this. As we saw in the gospel, even his own country town were critical of him. When we saw in the gospel the reaction of the people when Jesus talked about the famine as a punishment that God has brought to the people of Israel. But a widow in Sarephat, who was Gentile, was saved. Jesus also talked about God's mercy to Naaman, the Syrian, viewed as a foreigner and a Gentile by the Jews. But he was healed of his leprosy. And that was not what the Jews wanted to hear. Some were shocked, others were agitated. They turned angry at Jesus to the extent that of intending to throw him off a cliff. And they started to criticize his lowly background. Some sounded their prejudices, saying, is he not the son of Joseph the carpenter? Some truths, when spoken, oftentimes get adverse, if not bitter, reactions from people. There are those who are angered when someone tells about the things that they don't want to hear, even when these are truthful facts. Had Jesus exalted the Jews and told instead that they were God's exclusively privileged people, he would probably have received praise and appreciation rather than criticism. But remember that Jesus is not just priest, he's not just king, he's prophet. And as a prophet, he has to suffer. Prophecy is, means to be a spokesman of God, to remind the people of God's message. In so doing, some people would misinterpret him, and that happens to our Lord. Our prophetic role is to bring the message of God, even in our time. So that our Lord was straightforward. He has to say that even the Gentiles are favored by God, and they are also called by God for salvation. He is just truthful with his words. For Jesus, God's love and mercy is for everyone both for Gentiles and Jews. And this gives us the view of Jesus' teaching on the universality of God's offer of salvation, that salvation is for everyone. The negative reaction on Jesus' preaching is a consequence of the prophetic duty in bringing the message of God to people. Whenever we hear words pleasing to us, we accept them. But when we hear something that disturbs our conscience, we react negatively. At times, we tend to become critically annoyed. We develop biases and prejudices, just like what happened to Jesus, to, to the people of his time, his very own people, his very own countrymen, who became biased on him. And they became judgmental. And this happens to us also in our time, even for our catechists, missionaries, and evangelizers. People tend to be critical and to, to our evangelizers. Prejudice of all sorts implies that we identify ourselves only with our own thinking. It means that we do not see the minds of others anymore. Closing our minds on the views and thinking of others could lead us become critical and judgmental on people. This is not morally good. We can degrade others 
if we start to judge them without listening to them. We cannot be fair to them if we close our mind to others, even before they open their mouth. At times, we bring with us our prejudices even in the church. It could be against a priest, a preacher, a minister, or against someone in the congregation. If we do, we shut our minds off to the message of God that defeats the purpose of why we go to church and that defeats the reason why we are engaged in religion. A prejudiced mind will never sit comfortably in church. A biased and discriminating mind will never find fulfillment in worship or carry the gospel message at home or anywhere. When we listen to the gospel, it is good to do so with an open heart and mind. The church will guide us and teach us. The Holy Spirit will instruct us in all things and help us discern how to respond to the gospel in our lives. The gospel message of Jesus consoles us for it is a good news of love and mercy that calls for conversion, for a change of heart, and a transformation in the way we live. It is the Word of God, it is the Gospel of Jesus that is a great source of word of consolation. That is why many churchgoers find going to church as a source of refreshment, to get good feelings, to have peace of mind, to find comfort when we are soul-searching because of restlessness. Again, we are reminded of the words of St. Augustine why we are engaged in religion. My soul is restless, Lord, and it will not rest until it rests on you. How can we overcome our prejudices? How can we overcome being judgmental? These are our common questions that is often asked of us. The letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians explains the primacy of love as a Christian virtue when he said, there are three things that last, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of them all is love. In fact, in theology, we call these three things the theological virtues. And we have to strengthen ourselves as Christians in these three theological virtues of fides, spes, and caritas, or faith, hope, and charity. For St. Paul, love is a compendium of other virtues, such as patience, kindness, acceptance, joy, humility, and many other virtues. All these virtues are caused by the virtue of love. For Jesus, God has no favorites, that there are no privileged people of God's love. All of us have rights to receive God's love no matter who we are and what we are. Divine favor, divine grace is not earned by our educational attainment, nor by academic degrees, nor by any honorary titles, not by material acquisition and achievements in life. God's grace and unconditional love is freely given to those with faith in Him, to those who have total trust in the Lord. We cannot change the world, but we can make a change in the little effort by letting the love of God made visible. It is in our little actions that makes love a reality. We can find this in our daily life. For instance, our little charity to the needy, welcoming those people who are homeless, the refugees, these are simple signs of love in action. We just do not bubble words of love, but we have to act with love. Because if I speak without love, I am simply a gong booming or a cymbal clashing. If I give away all that I possess, but without love, it will do me no good, whatever. This we heard from St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians. My dear brothers and sisters, our biases, our prejudices, our being judgmental can be overcome 
by the theological virtue of love. So that let us ask the Lord of mercy to nourish us with his grace and through the sacrament of the Eucharist that we may grow in this great virtue. May God bless us all.